Uh, today we're going to be talking about the new weaponization of the federal government committee that has just been voted in. And we're going to connect that with the last video that spoke about the MK Ultra and the Frank Church Committee. Church Committee was a U.S. Senate Select Committee that was formed in 1975 that investigated abuses by the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, and the IRS. It was chaired by Idaho Senator Frank Church. That's how it had, it, had its name. The committee was part of a series of investigations into intelligence abuses in 1975, dubbed the Year of Intelligence, including in its House counterpart, the Pike Committee and the Presidential Rockefeller Commission. The most shocking revelations of the committee include the Operation MK Ultra involving the drugging and torture of unwitting U.S. citizens as part of a human experimentation on mind control. Pro, involving the surveillance and infiltration of American and civil rights organization. Family Jewels, a CIA program to covertly assassinate foreign leaders. Operation Mockingbird as a systematic propaganda campaign with domestic and foreign journalists operating as CIA assets and in dozens of U.S. news organizations providing cover for CIA activity. It also unearthed Project Shamrock in which the major telecommunications companies shared their traffic with the NSA while officially confirming the existence of this signals intelligence agency to the public for the very first time. In the new rules package for the 118th Congress, the Republican Party has created a subcommittee to investigate law enforcement and surveillance agencies. The new Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government is one of the concessions that far-right Freedom Caucus is demanding of Representative Kevin McCarthy in exchange for supporting his bid to become Speaker of the House. Democratic members of the House were quick to condemn the comparison of the Weaponization Subcommittee with the legacy of Senator Frank Church, the Idaho Democrat who led on intel intelligence reforms. This proposed committee would effectively investigate the deep state, a term that was popularized by Trump devotees to refer to the mechanisms of, and the unelected security apparatuses through the phrase traces its root to left-wing civil liberties advocates suggesting at least the potential for some trans ideological collaboration. Republicans were closely aligned with the FBI, but many have turned against the federal law enforcement agency following its investigation into collusion between Russia and Trump 2020 campaign. In August, dozens of federal agents raided Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate and recovered classified documents taken from the White House. The former president and his supporters in Congress were enraged. In recent months, GOP lawmakers have also called for investigations into the FBI's role in shaping social media discourse around revelations concerning Hunter Biden. Representative Mike Quigley of Illinois suggested that the Weaponization Committee would set up a formal structure for the Republican Party's right flank to air its worst conspir conspiratorial views. Quoting the late writer Hunter S. Thompson, Quigley joked, when the going gets weird, the weird turns pro. Now I've given you just a little bit of background. I'm going to show you two different videos, uh, one from a Democrat, one from a Republican, so it's it's fair. Um, and this is where they are discussing this committee in the House of Representatives. Yeah. The gentleman from Ohio is recognized for four minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I appreciate the gentleman yielding. A ploy? It's not a ploy when the Department of Justice treats parents as terrorists, moms and dads who are simply showing up at a school board meeting to advocate for their son or daughter. Their daughter. That's uh, Jim Jordan speaking, and he's not one that really likes truth too much. But really what happened is that there were, because there were a lot of parents going uh, to the schools and protesting, like the, the, the mask mandates, things like that. And there were a lot of credible threats against the schools and school like teachers and board members. And so what it was is they went and were making sure that they weren't being attacked. It had nothing to do with the parents. It had to do with threats against the school and threats against school officials. A ploy, it's not a ploy when the FBI pays Twitter 
three million dollars, not one, not two, three million dollars to censor American citizens. It's not a ploy when the Department of Homeland Security tries to set up a disinformation governance board because we all know that the Department of Homeland Security can tell what's good speech and what is bad speech, what's mis... I mean, you got to be kidding me. I tell you what, dozens of whistleblowers have come talk to Republican staff on the Judiciary Committee don't think this is a ploy. That's why they came to talk to us. They know how serious this is. The former Democrat chair of the Judiciary Committee is in the press today saying we're going to fight this tooth and nail. This is political. But meanwhile, the former Democrat chair of the Intelligence Committee pressured Twitter to censor a journalist. journalist. Now, there are some like there's something going on with this because the FBI did pay uh, Twitter some money to, for like reimbursement for, uh, you know, for requesting files, things like that. But this is all still this does need to be investigated. I, I will agree with him on this, that there's something don't smell right between FBI and Twitter this right now. First Amendment, something you guys used to care about. And I'd actually hope we could get bipartisan agreement on protecting the First Amendment, the five rights we enjoy as Americans under the First Amendment. Your right to practice your faith, your right to assemble, right to petition the government, freedom of press, freedom of speech. Every single one's been attacked in the last two years. Freedom of the press, I just told you what the head of the Intel Committee tried to do to a journalist. The most important right we have though is your right to talk. Because if you can't talk, you can't practice your faith, you can't share your faith, you can't petition your government. You, The right to speak is the most important and that's what they're going after. The idea that if, oh, if you're a pro-life activist, you're gonna get your door kicked in, you're gonna get arrested and handcuffed in front of your seven kids and your spouse for simply praying in front of abortion clinic and telling the guy who was harassing your son to knock it off, you're gonna have the FBI raid your home. The FBI used a major show of force to arrest pro-life Christian Mark Hawk, descending on his home with guns drawn. After allegations, he pushed a worker at a Planned Parenthood clinic in Philadelphia. Hawk's wife and seven children looked on in horror as Hawk was shackled and taken away, according to representatives for the Hawk family. The FBI told CBN News the number of personnel and vehicles widely reported as being on scene Friday is an overstatement, though they failed to provide a specific number. They also said no SWAT team or SWAT operators were involved, to which Hawk family representatives replied, the family got a technical term incorrect while in the midst of being traumatized by a whole bunch of FBI guys with weapons, body armor, and shields that- but the the protest that went on the, at, at Supreme Court justices' homes in the aftermath of the leak of the Dobbs opinion, oh, no problem there. Americans are sick and tired of it. And what we want, we, we don't want to go after anyone, we just want it to stop. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong opposition to H. Res 12, the Insurrection Protection Committee, which Speaker, McCarthy, the 21st century McCarthyism, uh, had to agree to last week in order to gain the speakership. So MAGA extremist Republicans forced, as a consequence of getting their vote, the speaker to promise to create this select committee. And Donald Trump had his hands in it. Donald Trump had his hands in it last week during this circular firing squad. He was calling the shots, and this will benefit him. Uh, this Insurrection Protection Committee is set up to insulate the ex-president along with various MAGA Republicans who are still serving here in the House who are under investigation. It's here to protect them from that investigation. It's here to uh, disrupt uh, the flow of justice uh, in this country. This is uh, a dangerous, extreme uh, committee that is put in the hands of someone who, a group of people who even defied congressional subpoenas and refused to come and testify before the January 6th committee. committee. Now, both sides of this uh, argument have some very good points. I do believe, you know, on the Republican side, because this is split right down the middle when they voted all republicans voted for it all democrats voted against it and so the, there are some things that need to be investigated definitely especially with the you know what was going on with, between the fbi and social media and trying to suppress uh, different stories and uh then there were some things with the russian 2020 collusion uh 
thing where, where there was a lot of people that knew that the that that information was not true that that trump had not uh he didn't have anything to do with russia in the election but they instead of telling the truth they just they kept it quiet and then they, there was some suppression of the uh hunter biden laptop but twitter has always had in their in their terms of service you are not allowed to post hacked materials and that was considered hacked materials because it was from his laptop that somebody hacked into to get the information so that's why they did that's why they did that and on the democrat side basically what he is saying is that are you going to use this then to stop the investigations that are ongoing with trump as far as like the january 6th committee and then the documents that that are uh that were found down there the classified documents that he had and and uh, and that those investigations do need to go forward in fact in fact just in the last few days you know there were some classified documents found it at biden's address so i mean it's why are all these classified documents getting getting out in the public i mean shouldn't they be kept in, in a secure place not at trump's home or biden's home you know they should be kept under lock and key if they're if they're top secret documents they're top secret doc documents someone needs to to be in control of them as far as the silencing of of uh, conservative accounts on twitter i mean i don't know all the logistics about it but i do know that there are a, a couple of conservatives that i've always followed on twitter because because i just i like them as actors and uh and james wood james woods definitely was targeted and he had a lot of his tweets were taken down and censored he was also like shadow banned and it is true because i i could see it myself but you know and he would post when he would get the notifications that you know that somebody had uh, reported his account he would get those notifications he'd take a screenshot and post them and the other was uh was kirstie alley who's now passed away but the same thing is that she had some, some issues with getting you know some posts taken down which i know she did like to swear a lot so it could have been something to do with that as well but it did seem like there was some censoring going on especially with kind of conservative hollywood types uh uh, some of the conservative news media but i wouldn't really call them mainstream news media you know it was like uh newsmax uh you know so, some of the real they they have a lot of conspiracy theories and things like that and then i know that they like the the fbi government i mean trump was president during this time but they're saying like the fbi was working against trump but you know they were they were suppressing a lot of uh what they felt was disinformation about covid about vaccines and they thought that that information could be harmful because in the past you know they, they there's been a history of some of the the kind of big anti-vaxxers that were on facebook um years ago they've long they've been long banned uh, because there were actually some some people that their children died as a result of listening to those people i can't give you their names i i don't remember them but they were they were the they were anti-vaxxers that were stating that uh you know vaccines cause autism things like that or you know your child will die if they get this vaccine and so people weren't getting their children vaccines for things like measles and and they died so i guess and you know in conclusion i i think that you know both sides have made some very good points i do believe that that there does need to be uh, an investigation there, there needs to be somebody overseeing uh, the fbi cia you know checks and balances that you know that's what our, our uh, democracy is based on and and hopefully you know anyone that needs to be investigated anyone that's broke the law whether it's biden trump whoever they need to be investigated if they've done something wrong prosecute them if they've done nothing wrong leave them alone I hope you've gotten something out of this today. I guess that's that's all I got to say about the topic for now. Uh, please be kind to everybody. Take care of yourself. And peace out.